Welcome to Indisputable. I'm your host, Rashad Richie. Good to be with you. We have a lot on the agenda today. Breaking down news of the day, my contributor, none other than Mr. Jeff Wiggins. Jeff is a Rebel HQ contributor and content creator. All around fascinating person, should be a great breakdown. Top story of the day, a man in prison was able to steal $11 million by impersonating billionaires and it actually worked while he was at a maximum security prison in the state of Georgia. You won't believe this, put up his picture for a mass here. According to the allegation, authorities believe that man on the left, Arthur Lee Cofield Jr. impersonated the man on the right, Sidney Kimmel, who puts a lot of money behind major movies and also major nonprofits. Let me give you the background to what happened. Authorities say some $11 million was somehow swindled from various financial institutions by someone pretending to be a billionaire. Actually a slew of billionaires and using cell phones to facilitate the schemes from prison. Once again, a maximum security prison. Federal prosecutors have identified Arthur Lee Cofield Jr. as the person who impersonated Sidney Kimmel, a California billionaire, while being locked up in the Georgia Department of Corrections Special Management Unit. Yes, he was in a maximum security prison who had a special management unit overseeing him. But somehow he was still able to pull off what has been called the greatest heist of any person ever from prison. Okay, he was serving 14 years for armed robbery, according to Fox News. Cofield was able to get cell phones into the prison. That is a form of contraband, it is against the rules. He utilized this contraband to execute his deals. One deal he allegedly arranged allowed 11 million to be wired from Kimmel's Charles Schwab account to an Idaho company to purchase six 1,106 American Eagle one ounce gold coins. Then he did something else. The prosecution also believes he charged a private plane to transport the coins from the gym state into Atlanta. And then allegedly used the proceed the proceeds to buy $4.4 million house in Buckhead, Georgia, very affluent community. Originally, the house was not up for sale, but the owner, Michael Zambilas, agreed to sell the house to Cofield, but changed his mind with a $500,000 cash deposit. So the case, the case was first announced by the Justice Department, okay? This was back in December of 2020. And for two years, They've been building their case, Atlanta Journal Constitution reveals. The DOJ has indicted Cofield and two others accused of being associates on the outside. Eldridge Bennett, 65, and his daughter, Aliyah Bennett, 27, of conspiracy to commit bank fraud and money laundering. The three have all pleaded not guilty. Authorities also suggest there may be, there may have been others who have fallen victim to this criminal enterprise. Many commentators on Lipstick Alley believe that the dramatics of Cofield's escape escapades could be great on the big screen. This is made for movie stuff. One person said, and I quote, this will make a good movie. In disbelief, another person wrote a similar thought. What in the American greed kind of story is this? How in the hell is this man able to commit such brazen and multifaceted scams? He obviously has inside people and help from those inside with him. COs, meaning correction officers included. Just think, what kind of things could he do if he applied his obvious smarts to doing right? This could be a movie. One person simply said, wow, impressive. Who is Kimmel? Kimmel is the chairman and the CEO of the Sydney Kimmel Entertainment Company. 
and is one of the producing forces for Hollywood films like Crazy Rich Asians, Hail or High Water, and Moneyball. The 94 year old founder of Jones New York is worth about 1.5 billion after selling the company for 2.2 billion. Matthew Kamins, who is Kimmel's advisor, gave a statement regarding the crime. The quote is, Mr. Kimmel was unaffected by whatever occurred and we have no knowledge of what occurred either in terms of background or context. After the banks were made aware of the fraud, Kimmel was fully reimbursed by the banks. Wow, okay, where do I start? So first of all, obviously, uh, nobody should be stealing money that does not belong to them. That's called theft and it's not right. Let's also look at the fact that somehow this individual inside of prison managed by a special management unit was able to pull off this kind of heist, this kind of theft. What is being called today as the largest financial theft in the history of America from someone incarcerated. How did he get all of these cell phones inside of this one building where he was under a special management protocol? I got questions. And if you know anything about these money management accounts, it's hard for you to get your own damn money out of your account. The kind of information they require you to verify, you have forgotten most of that stuff, okay? How was he able to bypass the protocols of Charles Schwab and anybody else in order to get this money, access the money, and then transfer the money to other accounts? I'll be damned. All right, got a lot of questions here. Obviously, they have caught on to the scheme, but they're saying not guilty. My dear brother, what are your thoughts here? Well, my first thoughts when I was reading the story earlier was like, hey, why is their resemblance so uncanny? It looks like they use the same picture of the same person twice, <laughs> side by side. Now, if this was going to be a made movie, I want to elect O'Shea Jackson Jr. to play the starring role. Ice Cube's yes. son, he would dominate this situation. Good now, I'm wondering how Arthur Lee Cofield Jr. chose his targets. He seemed to strategically choose certain individuals, in this case, a billionaire and an additional millionaire in order to rob them. But with all of this being said, I'm sure this isn't over. He has made it so far without being either caught or reprimanded enough to be able to stop. He's not done, this is gonna continue. Yeah, I mean, they're saying there are more actual victims. So they're not able to conclude that this was the last of the scheme. We'll continue to follow the story, fascinating nonetheless. All right, what if a cop told an individual who has a conflict with his ex-girlfriend to just kick in her door? We have video footage exclusive to indisputable, nobody else has this footage. A Georgia cop did something just like that. Here's the video. It's a civil matter, okay. but uh, he just wants his phone. Okay. So, can, we, can we make her open the door? Can't, but he, yeah. if he lives here. There you go. If he has a key. Yeah, he ain't got to, he oh, stay yeah. here. Exactly. Uh, you live here, right? Yeah, I mean, okay. I've been here for six to eight yeah. months, man. Not but right. my, my, my address is not the same. Hey, how you doing? Oh, Anybody doing anything criminal, you know? Because she changed the lock. She, she don't supposed to change the lock without giving you a key. I'm saying, okay. If she gave you a key, but she's supposed to I'm not worried about it. I'm talking about Georgia law. Do they have a key? All right, do you have a key to that new lock? Mm -hmm. All right, so again, she's withholding you from your property. All right? Because mm -hmm. now she's at fault for criminal trespass. He's I done nothing wrong. I yeah. came the first door, not going to go no lock. Okay. Of course, he is. No, you good, man. You saw that move at the end where the officer made a demonstration of how to kick in a door. I did check, I checked off record and on record. The officer was 100% wrong in his assertion that the girlfriend was committing criminal trespass. Additionally, it is a violation of department policy to enforce these civil issues in such a manner. A cop telling someone to kick in a door is not congruent to police policy. It is adverse to their policy. Let's put up the picture of this officer whom we have now identified. 
in his example of what the male should do. Let's keep that picture up. Riverdale, Georgia police officer, Quintario Williams demonstrates how to kick in a young lady's door. Her name is Crystal. Indisputable was able to talk directly to Crystal offline. So we don't have quote commentary, but we do have background. There's also a complaint that she filed. We have that complaint on record. So about a month ago, Crystal broke up with her boyfriend. She says the ex pounded on her door at 3 a.m. and he demanded to collect his things. But Crystal says he didn't actually want his stuff. The quote was, you just want to see what's in my apartment. Crystal's neighbor Antoine came downstairs to protect Crystal because as Crystal said, she did not want to get the police involved. Once again, that is the officer who did come to the scene showing by example of what he believes the ex-boyfriend should do, which is to kick in the door. Riverdale took no action after Crystal formed and filed a complaint. She sent the complaint directly to the police chief. We've had him on this show before. We've had him as a target of our investigation before, Todd Spivey. You also have the mayor, Evelyn Dixon, directed her complaint to Riverdale City Manager E. Scott Wood, who she says never reached out again. No contact, no response. The Riverdale police narrative left out the fact that Officer Williams advised the ex-boyfriend to kick down the door. So we have a copy, a full copy of the Riverdale Police Department. They call it a report narrative. In that report narrative, what's missing? His recommended remedy. The cop did not say, I explained to the individual that he should just go ahead and kick down the door and I provided an example of how to do so. You know why the cop left that off of the police report? Because he knew it violated all policy. He knew it violated the law and he knew it violated every sensibility when it comes to a domestic conflict like that. So he didn't include it in the report. In her complaint, in Crystal's complaint, let's put it up. She wrote this directly to Chief Spivey. Crystal says the police department dismissed her. There's a quote, I was hiding in the closet while this was taking place, texting my neighbors to call my family. I'm extremely disappointed, disgusted and discouraged with the Riverdale Police Department as they are being extremely dismissive to my complaint. This incident along with others are reasons why citizens do not call. The Riverdale Police Department and City Hall have not responded to our request for comment about this matter. Let me be very clear, we have tried to get everybody on record here. We have tried to get responses from everyone involved. We have tried to get information as it relates to this scene, to this situation. They decided to not provide one on the record. That's fine, that doesn't stop me from doing the story. Now there are some news agencies, there are some individuals who are in my position who refuse to do stories like this. I am not one of them. You have to do right by your citizens. What happened here we all know was a violation of public trust. Under no condition should a cop ever tell a man to kick in the door of a young lady. All right, dear brother, what are your, what are your thoughts here? Dr. Richie, good job out of you and the staff at Indisputable for breaking this open and breaking things down. Because as we know, data and stats suggest that police officers commit domestic violence or domestic abuse at around 40% of a rate. And so I think this is kind of an extension of what that is and what's going on here. This could have been way worse and it's already bad considering what we already know. But this could have been way worse for yeah. that poor woman and now, Hopefully, when you follow this through, because I know y'all will, justice will be served and that individual will no longer be a police officer. We're gonna stay on top of it as usual. Governor Ron DeSatan out of Florida is likely under investigation. All right, let's first go to the 
incident to remind you of why. Here it is. This morning, a surprising scene in Martha's Vineyard. Two planes filled with about 50 migrants landing on the island, according to emergency management officials. Authorities say the planes were sent from Florida Wednesday afternoon by Governor Ron DeSantis. This video provided by DeSantis's office, which says it was obtained by a source on the ground, appears to show the migrants' arrival on the island. DeSantis's office saying the planes were part of the state's relocation program to transport illegal immigrants to sanctuary destinations. Adding, states like Massachusetts, New York, and California will better facilitate the care of these individuals who they have invited into our country by incentivizing illegal immigration. The Treasury Department is now investigating. Let's put up the pictures of Governor DeSantis and also the Senator Ed Markey's pick. This is going to be interesting. So the Treasury Department is examining if the governor of Florida violated rules in how he spent money. According to a letter provided by Democratic Massachusetts Senator Ed Markey's office, the agency's Inspector General's office confirmed to several members of Massachusetts Democratic Congressional Delegation that it planned to probe Florida spending as part of ongoing audits into how states have used the billions in, uh, in sent, that was sent to them as part of the American Rescue Plan. Now, what's an audit? An audit is a forensic investigation. That's what it is. So, yes, Governor DeSantis is under an audit by way of the Treasury Department. There's more. Let's go to old Richard here. You got Richard K. Delmar. That's the Deputy Inspector General for the Treasury Department told lawmakers that the agency would, and I quote, review the allowability of COVID-19 aid to states related to immigrants or immigration generally. And will specifically confirm whether interest earned on the funds was utilized by Florida related to immigration activities. And if so, what conditions and limitations apply to such use. Efforts to stop it from happening again are this. Several groups have now filed legal challenges to stop Florida from facilitating more transports. And a Texas sheriff is currently probing the flights. He's under investigation by a sheriff in Texas. We reported on that last week. But the Treasury letter marks the first time federal authorities have acknowledged they are looking into the transports. The Senator's office late last month posed a question to the Transportation Secretary, Pete Buttigieg, and to investigate whether DeSantis migrant charter flights broke the department's rules by allegedly misleading those on board, which we all know he did. Florida did not directly use federal COVID-19 funds to transport the migrants. But state lawmakers earlier this year directed that the 12 million in interest earned off COVID-19 aid be used to pay for the transport of unauthorized aliens, as they say, from this state. So far, Florida paid a panhandle based company 1.56 million to fly migrants, but DeSantis has vowed to continue transporting them to blue states or what they call blue stronghold states. Wow. So literally this cat is playing games with money meant to help other people in a significant and serious way. Instead of him doing that, he's taking the interest of this money meant to provide assistance and doing this ridiculous deed to other human beings. That is the reality of Ron DeSantis and those who think like him. This is okay for them to do. Obviously, it is normative within their character to implement ridiculous strategies like this in order to land political points. But as I have said before, DeSantis is more interested in running for president than being a good governor of that state. Now, will all of these agencies actually do something to run DeSantis? Likely not. They're going to huff and puff and act as if they will blow the house down, but nothing will happen. That is where I'm at, that's what I believe. But it is up to us to continue to cover these stories because they are important to the fabric of our society and it provides a contrast to the insanity of these men. My dear brother, what are your thoughts? 
This is clearly, and I know it's been said a bunch of times, a political stunt with the lives of human beings being played as pawns for some political gain. It's weird and it's messed up. So while I'm glad that there's an audit in order to account for the money, this was this was human trafficking. And let's go back to the money part. <laughs> the Ron DeSantis of the world will probably claim that they didn't want the federal funds because it's a handout, but now they're gonna use it in order to gather, I don't know, interest from the potential base for him to get voter support for him to become president. It's awful, it's gross. And something further needs to happen in addition to whatever they're gonna find with the money. Uh, again, this was human trafficking and it needs to be said as such. Yeah, the one thing these cats fear, my dear brother, is actual accountability. They do fear accountability. And anytime there's some level of accountability, all of them start to um, act as if they are victims. When really they are simply being held accountable to their extreme behavior. But they are afraid of accountability. So there's a sheriff in Texas investigating this matter. There's a sheriff in Florida investigating the matter. These communities do not exist in a bubble. These communities literally are connected to all of us in this country. So while the DOJ may not do anything, there are others with local jurisdictional power that can do something. I encourage you to utilize the power that you have. We got more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay. All right, welcome back, we got a lot of show left. I have your comments right here, all right, always good to have the back and forth. Don't forget Aspiration, sign up today, aspiration.com forward slash TYT. Or you can just scan the QR code on the screen right now, give you time to do that. When you open an account with Aspiration, you have the chance to reduce and mitigate your carbon footprint, fight climate change and give forest animals Another chance. Go to aspiration.com forward slash TYT to sign up or scan the QR code you see on the screen. All right, let's get it. Anomaly, anomaly me, they look identical. I could see why this worked. <laughs> uh, Dragonfire 420. So he stole from rich people and banks, good for him. Andrew, thank you so much, Andrew. Candace the Leo says, that's police training 101, go figure. Glenda Palms, what the heck is happening in Riverdale, G. <laughs> Trent Freeman, thank you, Trent. Also, A. Martin, thank you so much. Antica membership, two months. Prison does allow you time to increase your brain cell activity. I mean, that brother is a freaking genius then, God. <laughs> Don't tell me there's something that's too hard for you to do. This man got 11 million on somebody else's cell phone while being in prison. <laughs> okay, all right, that's all I got. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I got something for you. I wish you Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a in Sunday? You feel free. Back off. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Because my dog was on my lap. We'll have a conversation in the gym. Why? I didn't Grab your stuff and come with me, ma'am. I'm not going to ask you again. You're kicking me off. The, you're gonna put me on another plane. Ma'am, I need you to get your oh, stuff. Oh no, 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 honey, we're about to fight then. You don't want to do anything to you guys to make me 12 hours late yeah. for my destination. This way. My dog was sitting on my lap. I put him in the bag. He's in don't the bag. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna refund your ticket. You can go all Southwest. Let's go. Yeah, that's called assault. I have more video. Before I go to the video, let me do this. Let's go to the Karen and Peak performance here to show you the anger of this particular passenger who violated their rules and became angry at everyone. At one point, she said, "F everybody." Well, everybody's not involved in this, especially this brother right here. Okay, he was just <laughs> chilling. He looked like that the entire time. He just wants this whole ordeal to be over 
so he can get to his destination. That's all. I feel the pain of that brother right there. There's more video. Here it is. Doesn't matter. Anybody can yeah, report yeah. anything. Oh, you anybody. just struck a patch with the yeah, bottle. Okay. okay, that's fine. You talk to APD with a few minutes. You no problem, man. Who did she just strike with the bottle? The guy that's recording me with his cell phone. phone. That's who I threw it at. Oh, ma'am, calm down. You asked. I'm telling you. Calm, calm down. You guys have been nothing but that's rude. That's fine. Calm down. That's fine that you guys are rude, but I need to calm down. There's rules. Kind of There's like rules, and I followed the them. And I put him in yeah. there. And you guys still drove acting. up. Nobody acting this way flies on a flight with us. Okay, f you. Okay. Eat bitch. Time. Get out of my way. Wow. Well, I want to find out. Ma'am, hold on. You, you told me to get off your there. plane, then get the f out of my way. Go on. Guess Julie. where you're going today. Yeah. Yeah. Is this your bag, man? Is this your bag? Was anybody hit back there with yes, that bar? Yes, I'm go find out. All right. Back. Why are they recording me? That's their right. It, that's their right. Anybody and it's my going? right to tell them to stop. Yeah. Not throwing to anybody. Billy, yeah. you call the APD? Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. For the safety of everybody, here's what we're going to have to do now. We're going to have to assume that every single person who's a white female with pigtails on the Southwest airline is, in fact, carrying it to further notice. You're going to have to assume that now, okay? This is getting too extreme. All right, brother, what are your thoughts? I want to congratulate and recognize the, the staff on that plane who. Yeah. Did their jobs. They reserved themselves. They restrained themselves, especially after she threw a water bottle at who looks like it could be TYT owns J.R. Jackson's little brother. He was, you know, everybody kept their hands to themselves, and that's great. You know, I look and it says the Southwest Airlines policy says we welcome small vaccinated domestic cats and dogs in an appropriate pet carrier in the cabin on domestic flights. Carriers must be stowed under your seat. She broke the rules. She broke the rules. But every time, Dr. Richie, and I want you to know this, every time I'm on for this segment, I feel like I should increase my own boldness, my own, my own part of my body where I feel like I can just evade rules and regulations to, to, to stress my point in a, in a, in a fine manner, you know, okay. not hurting anybody, but to get my own interest across. That's what I learned from these Karen videos from time to time, because apparently it works day to day for some of these people. It, it, it actually does work sometimes, uh, not this time. And I echo your Ooh. sentiment about the staff at Southwest and how they handle this. All right. Anti Karens unite. You're screaming at employees at Walmart. Get out of here. That's racist. Yes, it is. No, it's not. The United States doesn't have an official language, jackass. Talk to you standing line and waiting for it, just like us. They're doing the best they can. Don't give them a hard time. Nobody's giving them a hard time. Yes, you are. I'm making a comment. You can't and just tell me your damn business. Who the hell is speaking to you, bitch? No one's talking to you. You're the one that's being a bitch. You are a bitch. Giving her a hard time. Buddy, he's in my business. But he's talking to you. Shut up. Mind oh your business. Shut up. In this video, the anti-Karen is off camera, but I want to say this. I appreciate what you did. Now, while you may have received the aggression of the Karen who was rude to the employees there, you did effectively stop her from going after those employees, trying to make them feel small and insignificant. And she started coming after you, mission accomplished. Also. You have provided a check in her brain. The next time she believes she can do that without someone saying something to her, she's going to remember you. And she's going to say, mm, maybe I need to treat these people in front of me a little better, just in case there's an anti Karen somewhere lurking. Good job. I worked in the fast food industry myself. I've waited tables, I've been a cashier, I've been a fry cook, I've washed dishes. Done all of it. Hardest work on the planet. Very difficult. And you are paid pennies compared to what you're making, those establishments in particular. Be nice, be kind. 
People have a bad day sometimes. Orders get wrong because humanity is real. Thank you for standing up. Thank you for providing a contrast to the Karenicity in that moment. All right, Jeff, thoughts here. Not only are the workers paid pennies in comparison to what these organizations are and businesses are making, but they're often paid pennies less than the Karens who are berating them for doing something wrong. Karen at Dunkin' Donuts, can you please wait for your slightly above average donut peacefully, please, and move on with your day? That's all I have to say. All right, we got more on the other side is indisputable, stick and stay. Welcome back, we have a lot of show left. Okay, let me read these amazing comments before I do that. Don't forget, it's coming. Unbossed, Senator Nina Turner is happening. Four days away till the start of Unboss with Nina Turner. Subscribe to Unboss with Nina Turner and get ready to tune in daily at 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Pacific Time, starting on October 17th. YouTube.com forward slash Unbossed TYT. Looking forward to that so much so. Mississippi has been intentionally left behind. We have an opportunity to help our brothers and sisters who are struggling with basic essentials. We're talking about water, water. Still, the crisis is not completely solved, but there's something we can do to help the residents right now. If each of our viewers gives $5, we can raise enough by the end of the week to send 100 water testing kits and one truckload of box water to people suffering from the water crisis in Mississippi. I want you to go to tyt.com forward slash relief. That's tyt.com forward slash relief to make a contribution to the National Clean Water Collective for clean water and testing kits to help those in Jackson, Mississippi. Again, that's tyt.com forward slash relief. We have vetted that company and the process, all right? You can trust them. Okay, Gucci Man says, uh, talking about the Karen kicked off the plane. Uh, he, being the black male, knows not to get involved in white folks' business. <laughs> <laughs> Rose Oliver says, it's the pigtails that do it for me. I am. All right, no name, but welcome to Disputable No Name. We appreciate you. Okay. Also, let me give a big shout out to uh, the Carter Center, founded by former President Jimmy Carter and his wife. Very thankful to be part of the project to eliminate or decrease election related violence in the United States of America. This is a reality that many communities face now because of the new style of politics in the modern era. Big ups to the Carter Center for engaging in what's called democracy resilience. We're thankful. All right, a cop, a police officer decided it was a good idea to sell his department issued guns, steal money from a credit card. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Put up his picture full mass here. Florida police fired an officer and arrested him after he pawned his department issued guns, plural, and stole more than $1,500 from a co-worker's credit card on October 5th. We have the story. You're looking at right now, this is former Hylia Gardens officer Leonardo Carbo was stripped of his badge. He was charged with theft and credit card fraud after investigators tracked down his fraudulent purchases to airport pawn and gun in Miami. So he gets arrested, he gets stripped of his authority. Here's the irony of this, he would have still been employed if he shot an unarmed black man in the back. Mm -hmm. You realize that, he would still have advocates saying that he had no choice, he was in fear for his life. But he stole $1,500 from a coworker and according to the allegation, he decided to pawn department issued guns. Police say Carbo pawned department issued guns, including an AR-15 and Glock pistol at this shop right here. Here's a look at the interior of the shop, all right? They were happy to get those guns. 
But he did not stop there. He also got a hold of another officer's credit card. Now, the card was then used for a number of transactions at gas stations, a restaurant, Uber, Walmart, and a pawn shop. The police report said the total amount spent was more than $1,500. When investigators went to the pawn shop, they discovered that the credit card had been used to buy a firearm also. The victim said he remembered leaving the credit card at a restaurant and had asked Carbo to pick it up, the report said. The fellow officer requested Carbo to pick up his card for him before he went out of town. Well, look at this. He says, hey, hey, buddy, I left my credit card over at the restaurant. You mind picking it up? Carbo says, I absolutely 10 4 on that. He picks it up and helps himself to $1,500. I'm laughing. It ain't funny. But damn, you can't, you can't just, the police can't even trust the police with a credit card. From somebody that you know, come on, man. All right. Um, the police department said, and I quote, we acted swiftly after learning of his actions and proceeded with a criminal and internal affairs investigation leading to his termination and arrest. Great. Now, can you apply that when people who are unarmed get shot in the back by the police? Can you say that same statement next time there's an unarmed citizen in your community who has been shot and killed by the police? Say, hey, we acted swiftly. We created an investigation. We decided to arrest him and took away all of his authority. Boom. You see, this proves, ladies and gentlemen, that it can be done. Why is it that typically there's this administrative duty protocol? Well, now they're on administrative leave, paid administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation. Damn that. You were able to move this fast for a credit card and a pawn receipt. But you can't move that fast when there's video evidence of the actual crime. And the crime has a much harsher impact than somebody credit card, somebody's credit card being used. Now, the reality of why I'm highlighting the story is because as I have said before, corruption is never linear. Anytime you see this kind of corruption, it is always connected to other levels of corruption. If they're willing to do this, they're willing to do other things. That is my point. So now that you see you have a cop who's willing to violate the public trust, you must go back and look at the cases in which his signature is affixed. Because if he's going to lie and be this extreme in his criminal conduct, according to your investigation, do you think he has not lied to you before. Do you think he has never lied to a citizen or on a citizen before? Do you think he's never lied in front of a judge before? All right, Jeff, thoughts on this. I was going through a few hypotheticals as you were going along. And one thing that I mm. kept landing on was same situation, $1,500 stolen from a credit card, but it was a civilian. Mm. With that cop who stole the money, would they then be put on administrative paid leave while they're investigating. So look, I don't know, that doesn't really solve or prove anything. I'm just wondering as we go along, because yeah, they were kind of expedient and I'm glad they were, this is stealing. But let's apply that same energy to civilians, to the rest of us. But yep. I'm glad the, the the blue wall of silence was taken down in this instance. So let's let's keep moving that, uh, moving that thing forward. Yeah, there you go. Experiments on those who were incarcerated. The city of Philadelphia is now offering an apology for what they did to inmates some years ago. Let's put up the picture. We have an aerial shot here. The city of Philadelphia issued last Thursday a formal apology for unethical human experiments conducted on mostly black prisoners at Holmesburg Prison. This prison was known as the Terror Dome. During its heyday, it was a source of extreme violence. It is now inactive. But between the 1950s and the 1970s, it was the site of horrid experimentation conducted by a University of Pennsylvania faculty member. I got the details. 
approximately 300 men were exposed to herpes, fungus, asbestos, LSD, skin blistering chemicals, radioactive isotopes, and many more. Even agents connected, even components connected to Agent Orange. University of Pennsylvania, let's put them up. Dermatologist, Dr. Albert K. Kligman is known for patenting acne medication, Retin-A, conducted these experiments from 1951 to 1974, made a bunch of money. Johnson and Johnson, Dow Chemicals and the US Army were just some of the many sponsors of these underground human experiments led by that doctor. Later in his life, Dr. Kligman would say, and I quote, shedding the prison experiments down was a big mistake. Kligman forcibly removed the subjects, thumbnails, and infected them with ringworm, among other chilling trials that left the subjects wounded and disoriented. Most of these incarcerated individuals were not sentenced and they were actually awaiting trial. The prison used their desperation for bail money to get them to agree to these abusive experiments, usually paying the subjects $1 a day. After obtaining 1800 pages of Pentagon records, the Inquirer published a report in 1979 detailing a contract between Penn and the US Army with Dr. Kligman at the helm of the research. More than 300 inmates tested mind control drugs and potential skin hardeners to protect soldiers from chemical warfare. In the latter experiments, the paper found inmates complained bitterly of side effects, including inflammation that lasted weeks and eventually eliminated the willingness of the subjects to go on. So even with them being in an incarcerated environment, having no access to resources, and this experiment being placed in front of them like a dangling carrot, they even came to the conclusion that it was not worth what their bodies were experiencing because of these experiments. How diabolical is this? We're just getting the full story of what happened to these individuals. Experiment survivors like this man, Leotis Jones will leave the prison and become an influential activist and community leader bearing scars from the experiments for the rest of his life. He had been told he was being injected with a rare disease from India. By 2000, close to 300 former inmates, former prisoners who reported injuries from the experiments would then sue the city, Penn and Dr. Kligman. The suit missed the statute of limitations, even as Kligman continued to receive accolades for his advancements in dermatology. Well, here's what I'm going to do, sir. I am going to attempt to set the record straight and provide absolute context for how you got the legacy you enjoy today. I hope you appreciate it. Let's put his picture up. Kligman died 10 years later, February 2010, legacy of being a champion for advancements as it relates to skin care. That legacy has benefited not only him personally when he was living, but also his family and many companies today. After demands by activists last Thursday, the mayor, Jim Kenney, said without excuse, we formally and officially extend a sincere apology to those who are subjected to this inhumane and horrific abuse. Good for you, mayor, I got some words for you. Where's the money? Where is the compensation? Damn your apology without remedy. You know exactly what happened here. Now, while you were not the one who oversaw this, it is your problem to fix. It doesn't have to be your fault, sir, to be your responsibility. You decided to be mayor, you wanted the job, now you have it. Leadership comes with criticism and hard decisions. You volunteered for this post, you wanted it, you got it. 
It's your problem now, solve it. The University of Penn, the University of Penn, the Journal of the American Medical Association Dermatology and Penn Medicine are all struggling with what to do with the legacy of Dr. Kligman. Oh my gosh, what do we do? How do we solve this? I mean, we benefited so much as a society because of the experiments he did on individuals who were human beings. What do we do? Tell the truth. He set the record straight. The people he violated were human. Think about it this way. Do whatever you would do, respond the way you would normally respond if somebody did it to a person you loved. So they are now considering taking away various honors, including professorships named after Dr. Kligman. They also issued an apology of their own, renamed the annual lecture which bore his name <clears throat> and pulled funds that would have normally been allocated in his name. And now we'll be giving them to dermatology residents working with people of color and their skin issues. Some monies will also be directed into fellowships for soon to be dermatologists who are interested in working with dark skin. Not enough. What are you doing for the families? What are you doing for the families who are connected to these individuals who were temporarily incarcerated? What are you doing for them, those who are still surviving? This story is not over. All right, Jeff, thoughts here. You know, while apologies and admissions of guilt are great, and it's more than some in this situation are going to get sadly. I'm sure this isn't the only prison population that's been experimented on. As you stated clearly, a lot of entities need to come up out their pockets in order to fill the, the, the pockets of the others whose family members were suffering. These men were suffering. I also want to add, because I'm sure, I'm sure somewhere somebody's going to be like, well, A, they were paid pennies on the dollars for it, and B, they agreed to it. No. These men were desperate for money in order to get out of their, their situation. And so they agreed, not knowing exactly what was going to happen to them. They were suffering. Yeah. And so now moving forward, yeah. When it comes to his legacy, take it down. We don't need his name on buildings or his name on scholarships or anything like that. Let, and I mean, while you're doing it, tell everybody what's going on and how they came to be. His fortune came from some really messed up situations off the backs, uh, off the back of a lot of black men, just like much of US history. So take him down. And remember, according to the narrative, they were told it was something else. They weren't told what this was really about. They were tricked. And there's a doctrine in contract law that talks about unequal bargaining power. You don't get more equal than having basically the uh, director of a jail tell you, you must do this or this is gonna happen to you. All right, that's unequal bargaining power. We got more, we're gonna follow this story. We got more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay. Welcome back, we have a lot of show left. Let me remind everyone about the watch list, the big homie, Jared Jackson, remarkable show. Make sure the watch list is on your watch list. Join Jared Jackson live weekdays, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Pacific Time. Watch live daily and subscribe to youtube.com forward slash watchlist, T-Y-T. Read some of these comments, got some great ones. Um, this is interesting. Non-humanist, uh, and thank you for that non-humanist, non-human humanist. Because of psychopaths like that, a bunch of BS was, some still is in medical literature. Thugs like that are not physicians, they are torturers. First rule of medicine, do no harm, exactly, do no harm. A Martin, thanks so much A Martin. Remember these people are descendants of slave owners. That's why they were, that's why we are now here 600 years later. All right, a daycare according to an indictment decided to spray children in the face with chemicals, make them fight each other, engage in direct abuse and more. This was at a daycare in an Air Force base in Warner Robins, Georgia. Just put up the picture of their very festive 
literature. Three formerly employed women of an Air Force based daycare in Warner Robins, Georgia have all been indicted for alleged child abuse. According to the Department of Justice, a federal grand jury returned a 30 count indictment charging two former employees and the former director of a daycare facility located on Robbins Air Force in Warner Robins, Georgia with charges related to the alleged child abuse. So let me give you some background on these former employees. Zane Kiana Flynn, 27 years of age from Centerville, Georgia is charged with 18 counts of cruelty to children in the first degree, six counts of cruelty to children in the second degree, three counts of simple battery and one count of failure to report suspected child abuse. There's more. Antonisha Monet Fritz, 29 years of age of Tanner, Alabama is charged with 18 counts of cruelty to children in the first degree, six counts of cruelty to children in the second degree, three counts of simple battery and one count of failure to report suspected child abuse. And the former daycare worker, Latona Mae Lambert, 51 years of age of Kissimmee, Florida. Okay, charged with one count of failure to report suspected child abuse. Knew about it, according to the indictment. The indictment alleges a variety of felony cruelty charges against children. This was committed during January and February of 2021. The charges allege various forms of abuse did in fact take place to include striking children, causing children to fight each other, forcing them to hit each other, spraying them in the face with cleaning liquid, seizing and shaking a child while threatening to strike them, striking a child in the head with a book, kicking them to the wall and stepping on and applying weight to their legs. Flynn and Fritz were also accused of committing simple battery against children. With the indictment alleging that they lifted a cot with a child sleeping on it, causing the child to fall on the ground, struck a toy out of a child's hand and then forced the child into a small enclosure and sprayed two children in the head and face with cleaning solution. Lambert. Flynn and Fritz are each charged with one count of failing to report suspected child abuse. And they did not notify when they did not notify proper authorities of the abuse after allegedly witnessing it or have reason to suspect that it was occurring. Meanwhile, the child care page on the basis site has at the very bottom, let's put this up. It says right there, child abuse and neglect. It is the policy of the family child care program that any suspected abuse or neglect be referred to the base family advocacy office and they provide the information. A statement from the base has also been released. They say, and I quote, uh, the Air Force, uh, the Air Force base said in a statement, properly caring for our airmen and their families is of utmost importance. Our airmen should have confidence in the care provided to our child development center, the statement added. We are fully supporting the ongoing investigation and reviewing processes to ensure the appropriate measures are in place to safeguard our children. The DOJ is still investigating. This is an ongoing investigation according to them, parents and guardians of children who are under the care of the defendants that have concerns about their child are encouraged to contact the Robbins Air Force Base Family Advocacy Program at 478. 327-8398 during regular business hours per the United States Department of Justice. Stories like this boil my blood. Children, there is nothing a child can do, nothing a child can do that should make you abuse them. Nothing, I don't care what they say out of their mouth, I don't care what actions they commit to their children. You were the adults in this situation. I don't know what other protocols failed these children here, but I damn sure know you did. We will highlight these stories. We will bring light to them. National media has not covered this story as they should in my opinion, but we will. All right, Jeff thoughts. I'm looking forward to the day when you report that there's justice served in this situation. I mean, where do you even start from a commentary perspective? 
of talking about this situation. It's so wrought with ugliness and neglect and to some degree even like hate. So many people have been failed in this situation. So many families probably don't know what to do or where to turn in order to get what they need in this situation. Who can they trust moving forward in situations like this? Child care is necessary and boy is it expensive. But wow, like what are these families gonna do after situations like this? This is ugly. Well said. You can go to a different location if you like. I know there's one in Rockingham. Um, Southern Ponds has one as well, but I'm not renting you here. So you're not just a year two? Ma'am, I gave you a ride to the bank, got you back to the bank, I mean, got you back here. You then said I had a smart ass mouth, and if I was your boyfriend, mm -hmm. you would beat my ass, so I'm not putting you in the car. I'm not here. Like I said, you can go to a different location, completely fine, but if you want to pick up from Laurenburg, no, ma'am. Not today. You, you are a real genuine piece of pure joy. Okay. Yeah. Really helpful. Of course, no problem. Yeah. Really You're very pretty. welcome. You're welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got more video. Uh, now she decides to play the white card. Here it is. I know what it is. I feel offended. Why? I know why you're doing this. Why? Because I'm white. You, I literally just put a white lady in the vehicle. I know. And then so, you, so what's the problem? Because uh, I'm white and I'm you offended me. What? I feel offended. How? Why? Because I feel like you're discriminating against me. Because ma'am, you you literally said if you were my boyfriend, I would beat your okay. ass. I'll, I'll, I'll see who I can talk to. Yeah, call call anybody. I'm so offended. Okay. What's your name? Trey. Trey, yeah. You, you. I'm going go on TV. Okay, go on TV. Go on TV. My life matters. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, sure does. I'm so offended. Okay, be that. Oh, yes. Yeah, Tr Trey wasn't having it. Okay. Trey made it very clear. Well done, by the way, gentlemen, um, sir. Well done. Because when she said, "Oh, you're you're white against racist," I mean, you're you're racist against white people. Well, you just saw me put a white woman in the car. Uh, and she acknowledged it, but there you go. Let's do this, we'll put up the picture of the person that posted this on TikTok, his name is Trey. This is an interesting dynamic. Now let me remind everyone, let's keep that picture up. Remind everyone, um, the man already gave her a courtesy. He spoke about this courtesy, he said, hey, I made sure you did this, made sure you got to the bank. But in giving her a courtesy, she decides to make a terroristic threat against them. When you tell somebody you're going to beat them up, that is called a terroristic threat. You can be arrested for it. It's a misdemeanor offense in most states. And Trey, let's put this picture up again. Got some background. Trey uploaded this interaction between him and a white female customer after he says she treated him disrespectfully. As a result, Trey denied the woman's service at the Enterprise Rent-A-Car location he worked at. Apparently, Trey has since quit his job and moved to Atlanta. Well, hot damn, Trey, I'm in Atlanta too. So big homie, look me up, tag me on social media, let's connect. Matter of fact, let's bring you on the show, talk about your anti-caring moment there, okay? Let's dissect it. Interesting, good job, proud of you, that's how you handle it. You're respectful, you kept your cool, you explained to the customer, and you never, never allowed her extreme behavior to create a dynamic where she won. Karen's have to lose. We heard that from the counselor about Karenicity a few days ago. All right, AB, thoughts here. Yeah, shout out to Trey for this one because he handled that very well. It's so funny how Karen's mistake boundaries and self love and self respect for racism against white people. We can't be racist against you. You guys are the racist. That's the problem. And you don't get that. And so you got put in your place on this day because you can't just talk to people however you want to. We're not our ancestors. So I hope she had a day she deserved and I hope she got a ride from a white person who respected whatever BS she was coming with on that day. Yeah, and listen, Enterprise, I gotta say this, too many of these damn stories happening connected to Enterprise. Mm -hmm. It is what it is now. 
You all may need to look into this, may need to have an anti-care and policy, protect your workers. Three year old has a femur broken. You know how much pain that is? Let's put up the picture. It's a child, a child. And nobody has answers right now. A three year old's femur bone broken, femur broken at a daycare. No explanation given, nobody knows what happened. A Houston toddler came from the daycare with a broken thigh bone. And her father says he wants answers. Well, sir, I want answers too. The three year old victim, her name is Janiah. Her femur was broken on October 6th after her stay at Walker's daycare center located in Houston. Now, let's put up a picture of the father, okay? His name is Raymond. Raymond Jones is Janiah's father. Jones says he has not gotten an answer about what happened to his daughter from the daycare. But he says this precious princess told him Ashley hit her. Ashley hit her. And Ashley is a staff member at that daycare. According to Mr. Jones, when he picked up his daughter and saw the knot on her leg, he rushed her to the hospital. And that's when x rays revealed that her bone had been snapped in half. The bone is broken in half, not just cracked, broken. Why is that important? Because it indicates it was not done by accident, but there was intent. Fox 26, Gabby Hart confronted the owner, James Walker, in front of the daycare and posed the question What happened? The response I don't know. I have no comment. We are crying and everything else. We've been here for 40 years in this same neighborhood. Everything is going to be taken care of. We have no comments. And we will have a lawyer that you could talk to. That's what he said. That was his response to a three year old who has a bone snapped in half. And he was responsible for the facility and the operation thereof. Cold, seems as if he's trying to avoid responsibility. Walker's daycare center. And everybody knows how I feel about supporting black businesses. If you want to support Walker's Daycare Center, they're located at 8432 Livingston, Houston, Texas. Contact number 713-734-3583. The police are now getting involved. The police department confirmed that there is now an active investigation into this incident and the Crimes Against Children Physical Abuse Unit is on it in the meantime. Jones says he plans to take legal action. Let's put up a picture of the reporter who broke this story and did a remarkable job doing so. I wanna give a big thank you to this woman right here, Gabby Hart. The story was exposed by Fox 26 Houston's investigative reporter, Gabby Hart. Special thanks to her for shedding light on this incident and putting other parents on alert. Just imagine going to pick up your baby girl And you clearly see your baby girl is completely injured. And you say, baby girl, what happened? Ashley did it, Ashley hit me. And you try to engage with this daycare that you've been paying money to, that you have trusted your child with. You need answers and they respond, Oh well, we're crying too. No comment, you can talk to our lawyer. It would infuriate the hell out of me. But it's okay, Mr. Jones, it's okay because we feel your frustration and we are the village that will help bring light to this exposure to it. You go ahead and file that lawsuit, take care of your business. Jeff, thoughts here. When I was reading the report earlier and it confirmed what we already know that the femur bone is the longest, largest, heaviest and strongest bone in your body. In order to break that and you alluded to it earlier, it takes a lot of force. Most commonly in situations like a car crash or an accident, falling from a jungle gym, falling down the stairs, a lot of great force, even though femur bone breaks are common. For something like that to happen, someone would have to know something 
in that daycare center. Anything that can cause so much force to break a femur would be known to at least two individuals there. So yeah. not only did somebody do this, maybe Ashley, but someone else knows what's going on and they're keeping hush about it. This. Yeah, I believe Ashley did it. All right, I'm just gonna say that I believe the three year old told the truth. That's what I believe, okay? All right, we got more on the other side is indisputable. Stick and stay. Welcome back. Okay, we have a lot of show left. Let me remind you of Aspiration, all right? Make sure you go to Aspiration now. Really great people, very good stuff. Okay, aspiration.com forward slash TYT. You can also scan the QR code. Real simple, go to the screen, you got a moment, scan it. When you open an account with Aspiration, you have a chance to reduce and mitigate your carbon footprint. Fight climate change and give forest animals another chance. Go to aspiration.com forward slash TYT or sign up or scan uh, to sign up or scan the QR code you see on the screen. All right, I got time for a few comments. Rose Rosie put these so called women under the jail, talking about those that Decided to abuse, according to the indictment, children. Hey, Martin, thank you so much. Hey, Martin, we appreciate you. All right. All right, cool. One of the Karens that we covered, it was actually all in good, good spirits, has reached out via social media. That's what I'm talking about. Looks like we're going to have an opportunity for Karen redemption here. Mm. All right. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. Trump supporter admits that he committed a lot of crimes and made it look like Antifa did it. Black Lives Matter, Joe Biden supporters. Let's put up some of the damage he did to his own home. You see that? He claimed initially that this was done to him. A Minnesota Trumper. Who officials say staged a fire and blamed it on left wing radicals pleaded guilty to wire fraud. Dennis Mola, let's put his picture up. Oh, Dennis, we've covered him before. A Brooklyn Center has been charged with two counts of wire fraud over the September 2020 arson incident where he had claimed to be the victim of a politically motivated attack. Look at him. He, him just a victim, that's <laughs> all. This person submitted over $3,000 in bogus insurance claims and received around six to $1,000 from his insurance company. He even received $17,000 in GoFundMe donations to support for what he called a hate crime had been committed against him at the time. He had told NBC affiliate Care 11, he had chased three individuals out of his yard that night, saying one of them dropped a box of matches. Now let me say this, put up, put up the house again. The people at the NBC affiliate, y'all should have known good and damn well he was lying. He then says when he returned home, he found his vehicles and garage being engulfed by these flames. A spray painted message or messages that said Biden 2020, BLM for Black Lives Matter. And a symbol believed to be associated with Antifa was scrawled across his garage door. His was insane about his plan. People, first of all, Black Lives Matter has, ne they've never said, oh, and vote for Biden. <laughs> that has never been. Their political ideology, Black Lives Matter, you must vote for Joe Biden. They have never, they've challenged Joe Biden. So please tell me that the investigators caught on to this based on the mess that he painted. Why is it that the reporters did not catch on to this? Wait a minute, Biden and Black Lives Matter and the Antifa symbol, come on. This cat even claimed that he rescued four sleeping puppies from inside the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Put his picture up again. So let me get this right. 
People came to your house, you build a bad ass, you chase them away. As you chase them away, they drop matches that you saw. Obviously, they drop because who would know their detail unless they saw it. You come back to your house, your house is just magically engulfed in flames because all this happened when you were not there. And then you also save the dogs. They believe this mess at first. The GoFundMe speculated that because Dennis installed a Trump 2020 flag on his truck and due to the spray paint left on his garage door, is believed he was targeted for his patriotic support of our president. Let's put up the truck. He says, that's why this happened to me. Investigators concluded otherwise and determined that Mr. Mola staged the whole thing. In reality, as Mola well knew, he started the fire at his own property. He spray painted the graffiti on his own property and there were no unknown males near his home. Charge documents say according to the Star Tribune. What about the money and the jail time? The attorney for this guy says the defendant paid back all of the insurance money. He collected and has saved up enough to pay back the GoFundMe donations as soon as the court facilitates it. The plea deal did not nail down prison time precisely. Mm. So when this guy is sentenced in a future date, he will likely face three to four years in prison based on normative sentencing standards. But the judge has the discretion to give less. Wanted to give you an update of this. But once again, why did he do it this way? He did it this way because he's exploiting the reality that Trump supporters will basically believe anything you tell them as long as you say a black person did it or a Democrat did it. And then the trifecta, black, Democrat, and down with Antifa. This is the atmosphere we're in, it produces elements like this. He should be held completely accountable for the crimes he committed and the exploitation he attempted. Taking advantage of real racial issues happening in this country, not providing a remedy, not providing a solution, but only trying to make his pockets fat. Jeff, thoughts here. When I first heard of this story, I immediately thought of the Blacks Rule story from a couple of years ago. <laughs> the viewers need to go and Google Blacks Rule and see what comes up with that. It's the exact same situation. You know, my black spider senses started to tingle when I saw that Biden 2020 thing yeah. as a Biden voter. I know Dagon well, we're not repping him like that. I mean, no, you know, no offense to him, but he wasn't all of our first priority, our first choice when it came to the I, president. Right. So we're not repping that. I'm from an era where if we were gonna graffiti something, we would put our neighborhood up. I mean, probably not now because I just said it. But for me, it was Agla Green. Dr. Richie, I know for you it was Glenwood. But you know, that's <laughs> not really the thing anymore. Hey, he, yeah, you know what, you know, so there was a part of this that made me mad and you alluded to it earlier when he said that when he got back to the burning garage, there were four puppies in there, hey dog. You're already trying to blame black people for some stuff that they didn't do. Don't bring puppies into this. You know white people love dogs. How dare I you? Mean, I'm he, offended. He played into all of it. Uh, he He's a hero. He's a badass. He's a victim. Check he cares it. for the dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, he, I mean, he just. <laughs> I think okay. he, he must have went to some like website that like, Every buzzword you could think of, he's like, okay, I need to include all these and the puppies just in case. Because the victim mentality told him yeah. that because he's a Trump supporter, this was going to happen to him. But yeah, I think he was freestyling the puppy part. Yeah, That's yeah, I don't think that was on the checklist. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blew the whole case wide open. <laughs> I don't know. My dear brother, always a pleasure having you on the show, man. Tell people how they can follow you, check out your great work. Well, each week, each day, you can catch me on Rebel HQ. Uh, we got videos on YouTube and Facebook. And of course, I have a YouTube channel called We Gonna Be All Right. My most recent video was about my favorite scary movie of all time, which is The Ring. The yes. white girl freaks me out. And moving forward, um, we're gonna talk about that bubble boy incident that happened a couple of years ago. I think it's been 13 years since that happened. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna look and see if there's some updates. That's good stuff, man. Always appreciate your commentary. Always great, great reporting. Thank you, my friend, for all you do. All right, reactions next. Remember, take care of yourself, 
take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember, the truth is always indisputable.